Hi guys, I'm Nathan Carr, the founder of the Home of Caribbean Football, and you're watching Extra Time TV. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Extra Time TV. This is Andres O'Clark. I'm Kevin Campbell. And we have a special guest joining us today, Kevin. Yes. Kevin. We That's have it. with us the founder of the home of Caribbean football, Mr. Nathan Carr. Nathan, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you for uh, inviting me onto the show. But I want to get your thoughts on the Saul Campbell appointment. Now, I follow Saul Campbell a bit throughout my career, and he is a quite opinionated guy. I mean, his opinions on what happened in Poland and um, Ukraine prior to the Euros 2012 was very skeptical. And the way he approached things, it's really opinionated and he has his clear thoughts on things. Um, what's your verdict on the appointment and how was it taken in the UK and knowing his personality, how do you think he would approach the situation? Because in essence, he'll be a fish out of water, really, in terms of the culture. And the, and the climate, really, football climate, I should say. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Um, I've got to say, when I, when I first saw the news, I, I was quite excited. Um, <laughs> now, from a player perspective, obviously, what you associate with Sol Campbell, you know, leadership, he was a real butler. Um, you know, yeah. talking from, from, from an English person, you know, that, that watched the England national team, but, you know, through the World Cups, the Euros, you know, Sol Campbell was always somebody that was, that was leading from the back, very vocal, as you say, uh, um, very, very uh, opinionated had his thoughts on things. Um, what I found interesting about this is, in, in a way, kind of he's, he's received a little bit more attention, particularly here in the UK, um, than, than Lawrence. You know, and Lawrence has got the, the top job, yeah. um, and Campbell is only the assistant. Um, now, I was listening to an interview that he did the other day, um, and he was saying that, you know, yes, he's a bit of an outsider. He doesn't know a great deal about the should be going into football, um, but he is willing to learn, I think, he's willing to embrace the challenge. Um, he was saying that, you know, he'd like to look at the last five games that Transbago have played, um, you know, in the World Cup qualifiers and in, in the Gold Cup playoffs, um, just to get a sense of, you know, how the team sets up, the shape, um, the kind of players that he'll be working with. Um, so he's, he's going to be doing his homework, I think. Um, but certainly, I think it's, it's an exciting one. Um, it's quite difficult to, to kind of predict how we're doing a coaching capacity though, because he has no ex previous experience, you know. Um, he's very much new to this. Um, I know that he did his, he got, got his pro license, he went for pro license and on the same course as Dennis Lawrence, and I think that's how the two um, kind of formed a, a friendship. Um, so, you know, he's got no previous experience to, to go off. Um, but certainly, you know, I think I think it's um, it's an intriguing one. Um, and. If those two can, you know, can work effectively, Lawrence and Campbell, um, and really try and get the best out of these players um, for these upcoming World Cup qualifiers, then you know I think it will um, it will be great for the uh, for the national team. You know, just to build on what you're saying, you know, these are two coaches that you know, at the end of the day, they are qualified, they have their experience and so on, but. As coaches, these guys are new, and uh, I've managed to meet Dennis Lawrence a couple of times since he came down here, and uh, he's, you know, he's basically letting people know that he wants, he's thinking long term. Uh, you said earlier that you know football. Let's be real; it's a foot, it's a result-oriented game. Yes. Uh, you're only as good as your last game at times, especially at international level. Uh, a lot of concerns for fans of Dennis Lawrence is like, you know, he is planning ahead. What if you know uh, he doesn't get the results? And, you know, should the TTFA be very patient and allow him, even if we don't make it, you know, should they allow Dennis Lawrence and Saul Campbell to do what they do? Or do they cut their losses and start again? Because that seems to be the problem mm -hmm. from, you know, from a fan's perspective. Um, just as a fan of Dennis Lawrence and Saul Campbell, you know, that's one of my concerns, you know, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I do think generally there needs to be more um, more stability, more managerial stability. Because I, I think I read a stat the other day, and it was I think Trent Omega have appointed I think eighteen or nineteen managers since the time of the, of the uh, millennium, mm -hmm. um, and you know that that kind of just underlines the instability um, surrounding the team. So I think Lawrence signed was it a two or three year contract I think upon it, upon his uh, unveiling. Yeah. Um, for me, that's the right decision. There needs to be a long term focus now. Um, you know, results are not going to come overnight. You can't, you know, just be giving managers short-term contracts. Um, I think, yes, of course, these World Cup qualifiers and the rest of the Hex campaign, you know, that is important. But looking ahead, you know, looking at 2018, 2019, 2020, 
the um, the Caribbean Cup qualifiers, the Gold Cup in 2019. Um, you know, if you're looking at Qatar 2022 qualification, you know, he he needs to have assurance. I think, you know, he needs to have that stability to know that you know he can um, he can have that kind of that settlement. But um, no, certainly, I think I think a, a long-term focus is is the is the right way forward. Um, and I think you know Lawrence would appreciate that. Campbell, I'm not so sure. The way he was talking, it seemed to be that you know his focus was very, very much on these local qualifiers. And at, in October, when the X campaign finishes, I'm not so sure that he'll stick around. Maybe he's using this as a kind of a springboard to get um, you know another job, perhaps in, in, in the Caribbean, perhaps you know back in Europe. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, no stability is important, but sometimes results matter. Just like a Claudia Ranieri, sat on Leicester today. Mm. Yeah, but um, let's speak about our next qualifier against Panama. Now, yes, we have a new coach and all that, but what other approach you think we should take and and put towards this Panama game? Because Panama is an extremely difficult country to face. They're extremely physical, extremely strong, and technical. Guys like Blas Perez up front scores bad loads of goals. So Panama will be a tough nut to crack, but. How do you think we should approach that game? Because I have my own reservations on how we should, but what are your opinions? Well, it's going to be very interesting, isn't it? Um, I think with Lawrence now in charge, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how the team actually reflects, you know, how he wants the how he wants the uh, the team to play. Because you know he's obviously spent a lot of time around Roberto Martinez. Now mm -hmm. Martinez is a coach who um, obviously favours quite a technical, close ball control kind of game. You know, mm -hmm. likes to circulate the ball on the ground. Um, it's short passing. He likes to dominate possession. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know. Do trying to make have the players to do that. The likes of Bucard, Highland, um, Jovin Jones. You know, these kind of players. I think they are capable of, of, of playing a possession game. But as you say, in Panama, they're very physical. They're very direct. Um, and I think they'll probably play quite similarly to Honduras. how Honduras did. Yeah. Now Honduras in November, they came right out the traps. You know, as you remember, they came right out of the traps, yeah. first 15, 20 minutes, Transbago couldn't cope. Obviously, they got the injury to, to, um, to, the, to the goalkeeper, yeah. uh, John Michael Williams, that did not help, but they could not cope. So they're going to have to really match Panama's intensity. Um, and obviously, being on, 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 on home soil, you, you, you'd hope that the crowd would, would help kind of create with that, create that atmosphere. Um, what I'd like to see is, you know, the, the kind of the key marquee players of the team come back. Yeah. You know, for me, my team against Panama would be Michael Williams in between the sticks. Mm -hmm. I'd have Justin Moyer right back, Sean Bato at centre back along with Carlisle Mitchell, and Aubrey David left back. Yeah. Two holding, Bucard and Highland, Jovin Jones and Levi Garcia on the wings, Kevin Melliano in the hole, and Jovin jo um, and sorry, Kenwin Jones, I would bring him back into the fold. Why would I do that? I think because of the, the now some experience that Kenwin Jones brings, you know, being a captain since 2011. Um, you know, he, that, that's pivotal. That is absolutely pivotal. And, and you look at the other striking options, you know, in the squad, there isn't a great deal of firepower, okay. you know? Winchester, Cesar, um, Plaza, Roach to an extent, you know, these, these are decent forwards, but they're not, you know, they're not world-class, mm. I think it's fair to say. Um, and for me, Kevin Jones is the best of the bunch at the moment. So that would be my start in 11. It's crucial that they start well, and they really have to go on the front foot because... I thought against Costa Rica when they lost 2-0, they were giving too much respect to the opposition. Yeah. You know? They were giving far too much respect to Costa Rica. The centre backs were playing it around, you know, with, with, with freedom. Um, there was no real urgency, there was no real um, you know, intensity. So they've really got to go out the tracks against uh, against Panama um, and make sure that they get their key players involved. Jovin Jones is always a threat wide, Kevin Melino can produce moments of magic, we've seen that in the number ten role. So making sure they get their, their bright, you know, creative players involved. That, that would be the key, I think. But um, certainly it's going to be a very, very difficult tie. Panama have proven over the last kind of four or five years just mm -hmm. how formidable they can be. Um, and remember, this is a team that beat Honduras, I think, on the road, yeah. um, and then drew to, to Mexico, who are favourites to, to qualify for the World Cup. So um, it's going to be very, very tough. Yeah, and they, were, they narrowly missed out last time, you remember, that a game against the US in Panama City last rounds. Mm. We just want to you know, wrap things up where we'll continue speaking about qualifiers. We, I know we have lots of things we need to discuss, but um, where, where, tell the fans where we could find you. 
Um, well, website, as I said before, is um, www.thehomeofcaribbeanfootball.com. Um, I'm on Twitter, at Caribbean Football. Football is, is uh, abbreviated to FTBL. Um, so if you, you'd like to send me a tweet or a kind of a message, I'm always happy to, to reply. Um, and, and recently, just at the back end of last year, I, I produced a project called Carried Young Stars, um, which I inaugurated in 2015. Um, and that's just a YouTube video. Um, and there's a link on my, on my Twitter feed, uh, just profiling who I feel are the up-and-coming kind of brightest prospects in Caribbean football to so profile 15 players for 2016. If that kind of thing um, you know, is, is, is of interest to you, um, do feel free to, to go and check that out. You know, be uh, very appreciative. But, but no, thank you very much for having me on the show. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Okay, well, this is definitely not going to be the last time, for yeah, sure. Exactly. We are definitely going to have more conversations with you as well, you know, interact via blogs and so on. Podcasts as well. Yeah, yeah podcasts. So, you know, the pleasure is ours as well. Uh, so, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, Kevon, mm -hmm. where can we find you? Kev868 on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me at Andrew Soklal on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Because when you do that, you automatically qualify for a chance to win tickets to the upcoming games. Yeah, Panama, Panama, Mexico. Yes, and also the chance to win a copy of FIFA 17. And watch great videos with our buddy Nathan Carr. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Nathan, it's a pleasure. And uh, we'll definitely be talking to you soon. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cheers. Okay, guys, so don't forget, if you like and subscribe our page on YouTube, Extra Time TV, you instantly qualify to win a copy of FIFA 17. So don't forget, like and subscribe.